Our world is filled with natural wonders. As with other naturalists fueled with curiosity, I've endeavored to understand as much as I can about these wonders. A timeless and invaluable tool that most naturalists use is a journal. A journal not only helps the naturalist to reflect upon his observations, but protects the observations from the human memory, which is notorious for distorting and neglecting details. I am passionate about my studies and love to share with anybody willing to engage. This is why I create and share my nature journal. We've been quite busy this week planting some of the 700 trees that we had ordered. And after rabbit proofing the fence to our newest tree garden, we had released five rehabilitated baby bunnies. We believe they all survived, and we even saw one a few days later. The beavers have been busy too, especially working on the dam in Morton's pond. And it seems that they're going in the field adjacent to their series of ponds and starting a whole new one. And it even appears that they're eating the roots of the Phragmites. It rained quite a bit the last week, so unfortunately I wasn't able to bring my camcorder on several days. But the wet spring is good for the trees we're planting and the wild flora, as well as amphibians. Green frogs seem to be particularly enjoying the wet weather. Many were congregating in the vernal pool where the salamanders bred a few weeks ago, which is an atypical place for them. I did have it enough though to catch some of the migrating birds. We've been averaging about four green herons per day. And we've had a solitary sandpiper lingering at the beaver pond for a couple of days. Notice the grayish brownish chest, the olive legs, and the black and white spots on the back and under wings. Also, the solitary sandpiper has a very bold white eye ring. Also, it tends to bob its head when it's excited. And the woods are now filled with the songs of wood thrushes. These are one of our most common thrushes, and they will breed yeah, here. Perhaps some of the hardest birds to get a visual on, but the most rewarding, are the warblers. In general, warblers are small, hyperactive, and stay well hidden. But they are a joy to look at with all the bright colors and incredible patterns. This one is the yellow rumped warbler. Named for its yellow rump, which we can't see from this angle, but they also have the yellow shoulder patches and a yellow cap on the head. And the streaking on the chest is very heavy. The yellow warbler is one of our most common. They are easily found in fields and hedgerows all over the region. Although they're not always easy to spot visually, 
Their songs can be heard from quite a distance. Sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm so sweet. Warblers aren't the only colorful birds we're getting. We're also seeing a lot of rose-breasted grosbeaks now, as well as scarlet tanagers. Tanagers are hard to see very well because they tend to stay higher up in the trees. One colorful bird that we should be seeing more of this time of year is the yellow-bellied sapsucker. This one is exhibiting its namesake on this American mountain ash. They are usually one of our most common woodpeckers and we've seen very few this spring. It's a little unsettling. Hopefully nothing's going wrong in their wintering grounds. Our most rare breeding bird has returned for the summer, the clay-colored sparrow. This field, which is only half ours, the other half belongs to our neighbors, is the only place in Oneida County that these sparrows are known to breed. And here are some quick highlights of a bike ride I took through the Utica Marsh this week. Our mission at Spring Farm Care's Nature Sanctuary is to protect wildlife and enhance habitat around central New York. We thank everybody for supporting us, and if anyone has any questions, comments, would like to learn more, or schedule a tour with us, please check out our website or find us on Facebook. Mm -hmm.